In this third episode of the series on building a rack fusion controller, we have finally come to PVC cameras. So far, we have been looking at the uh, switching side of the controller. We have looked at creating a shift layer for the buttons for input source selection. We have created paging like menus up here on those six buttons, associated it with cut, auto, fade to black, shift, and a menu navigation key, including the transition here. So watch the first two episodes for that. But on this side, we want to control the three PTC cameras that we set up in the very first episode. And uh, what we have learned so far is that it's pretty nice to have like, um, pages that we can go between. This is what we had. If we just go over here, we can uh, go in, in simulation mode. And if we uh, press the menu key over here, you see that it is uh, inside here. It is basically toggling between these two. And we could add more pages if we want. Also, if I, if I operate the shift key, you see the shifted level here becomes active as I'm clicking this one and then releasing it again, it falls back and something is, is changing down here. So some of those principles will be applied over here. And I think we want to hold down shift, drag across these eight elements to have like a page for each camera, basically. That's what I want to do. So selecting these eight elements, I can right click create pages and then I want to have three pages right there. So I think we, we need a variable to, uh, to control this and that would be um, camera select, cam select. All right, so we'll just create a variable that changes between these three pages like that. And we'll just submit that guy. And now we have a bug here that makes this stick around until you click outside of it. And then you confirm that, yes, you want to have a new variable created. Okay, what just happened is that I got these uh, pages created on my shifted level, which is really not ideal. I'm sorry to say, but it is not ideal. We should definitely have them somewhere else. So that was something that warrants clicking the undo button and we go back to the state just before. I think we want to pick rack fusion layer here. And then we'll just do the same thing again. Let's just create pages, uh, cam select variable. That's all fine. Let's just click outside, confirm and what have we now? Now we have these three pages on uh, on the Rack Fusion layer. I'm actually not too happy about that. So I'll just create a PDC control layer. You see, layers quickly become useful for other things than just storing a behavior. It's also a way to group things and be able to collapse them in the tree. So now this layer PDC is purely for containing my sub layers for the PDC control. And in a moment, we'll have a camera select. So that also would be very nice to have right there. So create pages for the third time. Yes, thank you. And now we are here. So that's nice. We can uh, we, we see that we have this variable called cam select page one, two and three. And if I go between them, you can see that it's changing between visibility of these layers. So far, so good. I want that to go on to the selector down here. So I will just uh, create behaviors here on this one. And I want to do that on the PC layer. That's fine with me. So I'll just create behavior edit variable, set the variable, cam select. Yes, thanks. Uh, and I want to use, so actually what I get when I get step change here is I get, um, so that's interesting, right? I just get a button that will cycle between the three cameras. That's one way to have a camera or pay, you know, a camera selector. Yeah. Uh, but what we traditionally do is we put these on individual buttons. So you select camera one, two, and three. We'll do that today as well. So basically for this button, I rather want to change it around to be a set value behavior. And now what I need to do is to basically pick the value that it should have. So as I'm pressing that one, it will do that. So um, I wonder, could I possibly copy this guy and then paste it onto these two? Let's see, is it possible? Uh, I'm not sure I can. Okay, so I'll just mark these two. I will create behaviors for them. That happens on this layer. That's nice. Okay. And then I will pick a, or I could also do basically just drag across them, use my batch editor here. This is some super cool uh, thing. So set value is my master behavior. I'll just duplicate that a few times. The parameter, I'm happy with that. I'll duplicate that a few times. See, every time I click in one of these boxes, it's because I need to mark the field and then you press the copy button to move it to the next value. Over here at match value, uh, I do something like it, but I need to change this to page two and page three. How do I know? Well, because I remember 
that page one, two, and three are the values that we are going to change between. So if we, we now inspect these, you can see that I already got the match value value set here. So that's really nice. The only thing that is an advantage of, of A10 is that we have a page number one selected, and this is actually showing the, the value name. You see the lower case, uh, case P. So if we go in here and we say, no, actually what I wanna do is to uh, put in the real names of the camera. So I'll just type in Canon. Yeah, and then on this one, I can put in Pana number one. Nice. Oh, you see when it's shrinking like that, this is something Reactor does when it sees that the label is gonna be too wide to actually fit. So it's nice, but it's also sometimes spoiling a little bit the aesthetics of things. I'm not sure this will work as well as I hope it won't, will do. But if I show more, if I go to default feedback, the place where we see, let me see the um, the text size of this one. If we modify the text size to, and now I know this is voodoo a little bit, but I type in 2.2 or maybe I type in 1.1 and then I get a text size, which is really small. But if I use the dimension two, yeah, right there. So that's pretty nice. Now I have forced it to be this size all the time so that I have consistency visually. Okay, let's just move on. We now have this selector. Let's just try it out in real life. Can I use this to go between my layers? Yes, I can. So I have a camera selector right now. That's pretty neat. Let's go ahead and configure our Canon camera. So we just exit this mode and then we can either click on the behaviors up here or we can try to select them here. It doesn't really matter, but you see left, right is our left, right dimension. And I want to associate that with my Canon camera. Search up pan, pan speed. It's usually the one that you want. Now notice as I'm picking this, it will find the behavior speed control, which is the one that is usually used for any uh, yeah, parameter like pan, tilt, zoom, and so on. So we can move ahead and do the same for tilt. Okay, tilt. Tilt speed. See, there we have it. All right, that's super cool. And then uh, that's the up down dimension. Then we'll take the rotation here. Rotation is usually called zoom are used for zoom on these cameras. Zoom speed on the Canon camera, thank you. And then the top button uh, used, uh, it can be different things, but it could be a preset recall. That is at least one thing we have traditionally done. So let's just preset recall. Yes, right here, it has a, an additional parameter, which preset is it? Let's take preset number one, I'm assuming that is like the home position, and it automatically picks a behavior called trigger. So we see we have um, done this pretty quickly. Now let's check it. So I, in a different web browser, I have the Canon camera and uh, we can have our emulation here, enable emulation. So Canon camera, this is us moving the joystick. The camera is moving around. We can also tilt. Yes, thank you. By the way, this is over the internet. This is our office and it seems like it's dark. I have turned on the light on the remote here. So nobody's in our showroom except us. And we are remotely many kilometers away from the office having fun with cameras there. So that's pretty nice. Oh, okay, that worked. Uh, so let's move on and do the same for um, uh, actually the Panasonic. But before we do that, we should probably get some actions onto these. So let's just quickly edit the parameters uh, or add some parameters. What do we wanna do here? Uh, white balance is one thing that is uh, usually pretty nice having white balance mode available on these so i'll just do that it picks up step change we have auto here so we can go between different white balance modes that's nice um, let's go to the next one this one number b just pick some parameter from the camera for this as well what would that be maybe as we can go to white balance mode we could adjust kelvin degrees so if we do that yes okay Actually, it seems like we cannot do it unless maybe we are in a specific white balance mode here. So just notice what happens to the Kelvin degrees. Yeah, it's it's giving us a preset value depending on what we are choosing. And then only if we are here in the Kelvin mode, then we can change these values. Do you wanna see if this works? I wanna see if it works. So maybe we go to the Canon camera page here and then we'll just check if uh, what about the white balance mode you see that is changing behind that that's the mode that you're seeing right there okay so this mode 
white balance b a manual yeah we are changing that parameter in this range if we are at you know the kelvin degree part then we can also change the value of the kelvin degrees and this should actually affect our image so we can paint it a little bit and i see change that's pretty neat all right so that works now guys you can figure out how to do these keys yourself right so we should move on and do the same for panasonic so basically we go to a different page this time and um we can just uh, click it like that if we want. And then, uh, I mean, if you click here, that just notice what gets uh, detected over here. This might change navigational scheme. But right now, it will always pick the behavior that is currently driving the joystick. So to actually change up down for the one of the Panasonic cameras, we need to either pick it here and change it there. Or we could also just quickly go here and then mark that one because then when we exit or select that camera as we are now clicking these you see that it is going to select behaviors on page number two. Oh, by the way let's just change these canon cam so we'll just have better naming of our layers here pana number one and panasonic number two like that okay so we will go and do the left right up down on the Panasonic camera, pan speeds, okay, and it's picking speed control, that's super cool. Then we have up down dimension on the first Panasonic camera, tilt, speed, yes, thank you. We have rotation, we'll find the camera, we'll type in zoom, zoom speed, yes. Now, I don't want to do the joystick today, but this is all, well, I do. Yeah. So let's just preset. Re no, 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 no. It's up there. Right. Pick camera. Preset. Preset recall. It's typically called the same. We need to pick a preset. Number one is fine. OK. And it's asking me for this. I will accept in this case. It's basically sometimes it's asking you what behavior do you want, especially if you have picked something before and then you want to do that. Let's just pick a behavior for this one. It could be white balance again. So let's just search white balance mode, white balance mode right here. Okay, that's nice. And that also came in pretty clearly like it did for the Panas or Canon camera, white balance. So what do we, uh, color temperature maybe? So we can pick that guy and have it on this one. Okay, so these things are nicely in place right now. It, it looks like color temperatures also depending on my mode here, yes. So you see that little icon is disappearing when I am on a specific um, mode like variable, apparently. So um, that's a good sign. All right, now let's check the Panasonic. We are basically ready now, right? So we can just move this a little bit to the side so we can see our cameras over here. The Panasonic cameras are these. This is the first one. So uh, let's just check that it works in the showroom. Yeah, it does. And that should be the one that we have currently selected. So we could now go to the joystick and move the joystick and we'll see that we're actually controlling that camera. That's nice, that's nice. Let's let's just pick the Canon camera. So we just pick Canon here. Let's try the joystick. Nothing is happening on the Panasonic. No, we go to the Canon camera. Will that move as we're doing that? Yes, it will. Okay, so we actually successful in doing this on the Panasonic camera. We also did a little bit with white balance. So let's just check that one out. And um, so we'll move over here and check what if something, ha yeah, we see white balance mode is definitely changing. We also can change the value of this color temperature variable here. And maybe if we rotate it long enough, we'll see changes to the image. Something is also happening here. This gives me another chance to just show you that not always is step change the right thing to choose. Sometimes you want to use step change long range. So long range is one variation of step change that is useful because it allows you bigger jumps. Let me show you what I mean. If we are here and I'm turning this knob, you see that it's jumping in, in, you know, in, in thousands of Kelvins. Let's just check the effect on the side. Okay, you see thousands of Kelvins as I'm changing this value. Very clear to see over here. Now, if I press it once, notice this little icon here. That's the fine course indicator. If I click it, it disappears. And now we are in the fine mode. And as I'm turning it, you see it's now resolution of 100 Kelvin degrees as I'm turning the encoder. 
I now click it again. I have find course mode or course mode enabled. And now it's happening in, in thousands. So that's a variation of step change that you might want to know about. Because when you have parameters with a long value range, then this is a better way to manipulate it.